the collected works of Sri Ramana Maharishi, Self Knowledge, Atmavidya. A devotee once wrote on a slip of paper that self knowledge is the easiest thing, since one already is the self, and hand it to Bhagwan, asking him to write a poem on the subject. This is the poem written. Lo, very easy is self-knowledge. Lo, very easy indeed. Even for the most infirm, so real is the self that compared with it the amlak in one's hand appears a mere illusion. 1. True, strong, fresh, forever stands the self. From this in truth spring forth the phantom body and phantom word. When this delusion is destroyed and not a speck remains, the sun of self shines bright and real in the vast heart expanse. Darkness dies, afflictions end and bliss wells up. The thought I am the body is the thread on which are strung together various thoughts. Questing within inquiring, who am I and whence this thought, all other thoughts vanish. And as I, as I within the heart cave, the self shines of its own accord. Such self-awareness is the only heaven. This is stillness, this abode of bliss. Of what avail is knowing things other than the self? And the self being known, what other things is there to know? That one light that shines as many selves, seeing this self within, as awareness, lightning flash, the play of grace, the ego's death, the blossoming of bliss. For loosening karmas, bonds and ending births, this path is easier than all other paths. Abide in stillness without any stir of tongue, mind, body and behold the effulgence of self within, the experience of eternity, absence of all fear, the ocean of vast, of bliss. Annamalai, the self, the I, behind the eye of mind which sees, the eye and all other senses, which knows the sky and other elements, the being which contains, reveals, perceives, the inner sky that shines within the heart when the mind free of thought turns inward. Annamalai appears as my own self, true grace is needed, Love is added, bliss wells up. Translated by Professor K. Swaminathan. Verses on the celebration of Bhagwan's birthday. Bhagwan was born on December 30th, 1879. His birthday, however, is observed according to Tamil solar calendar in Dhanura Masa, when the moon is with the star Punarvasu. According to the Western calendar, this day falls in the months of December-January. It was one of the great annual festivals of the ashram and still is. When fest it was proposed to celebrate it, however, Bhagwan protested and composed the following poem. However, his disciples began to celebrate it anyway. You who wish to celebrate a birthday, inquire first who was born. One's true birthday is when one enters into the eternal being which shines forever without birth or death. Of all days on one's birthday, one should mourn one's fall into samsara. To celebrate it as a festival is like adorning and glorifying a corpse. To seek oneself and merge in it is a wisdom. Complaint of the stomach. One day there had been 
feasting at the ashram. Many had been upset by the large quantity of rich food. Someone quoted the following complaint about the stomach by the Tamil poet Avayar. You will not go without food even for one day, nor will you take enough for two days at a time. You have no idea of the trouble I have on your account. Oh, rest stomach, it is impossible to get on with you. Bhagwan immediately replied with a parody, giving the stomach's complaint against the ego. You will not give even an hour's rest to me, you stomach. Day after day, every hour, you keep on eating. You have no idea how I suffer. Oh, troublemaking ego, it's impossible to get on with you. Nine stray verses. An old devotee, Som Sundara Swami, once begged Bhagwan to write in his notebook at least an akshara, a single syllable. An akshara also means undecaying and denotes Brahman. Bhagwan wrote a short epigram on the difficulty of writing down the akshara. This is the first verse below. The remaining verses were written at odd times by Bhagwan and included in some of the poems of Murugnar. The order used here was suggested by Bhagwan. 1. One label shines forever in the heart as self. Who is there anywhere who can write it down? Incantation reaching to the source of sound is the best course for those who are not firm in consciousness, which is the source of the eye. He who mistakes this excreta-making body for self is worse than one who, born a pig for food, takes excreta. Incessant search for self, the love supreme of God, we call. For he alone as self abides within the heart of all. What introverted mind calls peace, outside as power is shown. Those who have reached and found this truth, their unity have known. He who is contented with his lot from jealousy is free. Balanced in affluence and mishap, not bound by action he. By him alone who saved himself can other folk be freed. The help of others is as if the blind, the blind would lead. Question and answer are of speech. Duality their sphere. Impossible in monism to find them anywhere. There is neither creation nor destruction, neither destiny nor free will, neither path nor achievement. This is the final truth. Um, apology to Hornets One day when Bhagwan was climbing the hill, he knocked against a hornet's nest and was attacked and very badly stung on the leg and thigh. He felt remorse for having disturbed them, asked why he met with such harsh treatment for what had happened accidentally, he replied as follows. When I was stung by hornets in revenge upon the leg until it was inflamed, although it was by chance I stepped upon their nest constructed in a leafy bush, what kind of mind is his if he does not at least repent for doing such a wrong?